In order for you to get a better sense of finance and some of the basic terms associated with uh, a business and investing in a business, I'm going to use the example of a lemonade stand. We're going to go into business together. We're going to open up lemonade stand. So the, the reason why I'm using the example of a lemonade stand is a very simple way to understand the basics of a business. How to understand how a business works, how a business generates profits, what's involved in raising capital to start a company, what you do when you're ready to decide to monetize your investment or take some money off the table. You'll be able to understand each of these concepts through the very simple lens of a small startup business like a lemonade stand. We're going to go into business together. We're going to start a company. And we're going to start a lemonade stand. And now I don't have any money today, so I'm going to have to raise money from investors to launch the business. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to form a corporation. It's a little filing that you make with the state, and you come up with a name for your business. We'll call it Bill's Lemonade Stand. And we're going to raise money from outside investors. We need a little money to get started. So we're going to start our business with 1,000 shares of stock. We just made up that number. And we're going to sell 500 shares more for a dollar each to an investor. Uh, the investor is going to put up $500. We're going to put up the, the name and the idea. We're going to have 1,000 shares. He's going to have 500 shares. He's going to own a third of the business for his $500. So what's our business worth at the start? Well, it's worth $1,500. We have $500 in the bank plus $1,000 because I came up with the idea uh, for the company. Now, I'm going to need a little more than $500. So what am I going to do? I'm going to borrow some money. I'm going to borrow from a friend, and he's going to lend me $250. And we're going to pay him 10% interest a year for that loan. Now, why do we borrow money instead of just selling more stock? Well, by borrowing money, we keep more of the stock for ourselves. So if the business is successful, we're going to end up with a bigger percentage of the profits. So now we're going to take a look at what the business looks like on a piece of paper. We're going to look at something called a balance sheet. And a balance sheet tells you where the company stands, what your assets are, what your liabilities are, and what your net worth or shareholder's equity is. If you take your assets, in this case, we've raised $500. In exchange for the $500, the person who put up the money only got a third of the business. The other two thirds is owned by us for starting the company. Well, that's $1,000 of goodwill uh, for the business. Uh, we're borrowed $250, well, we're going to owe uh, $250, that's a liability. So we got $500 in cash from selling stock, $250 from raising debt, and we owe $250 loan. And we have a corporation that has, and you'll see on the chart, shareholders equity of $1,500. So that's our starting point. Now let's keep moving. Well, what do we need to do to start our company? Well, we need a lemonade stand. That's going to cost us about $300. That's called a fixed asset. Unlike a lemon or sugar or water, this is something that you, like a building, you buy and you build it. It wears out over time, but it's, it's a fixed asset. And then you need some inventory. What do you need to make lemonade? Well, you need sugar, you need water, you need lemons, you need cups, you need uh, little containers, and perhaps some napkins, and you need enough supplies so let's say have 50 gallons of lemonade in our start of our business. Now, 50 gallons gets us about 800 cups of lemonade, and we're ready to begin. Let's take a new look at the balance sheet. So now we spent $500. We only have $250 left in the bank, but our fixed assets are now $300. That's our lemonade stand. Our inventory is $200. Those are the supplies and things, the lemons that we need to make the lemonade. Goodwill hasn't changed at 1,000. So our total assets are $1,750. We still owe $250 to the person who lent us the money. Shareholder equity hasn't changed. So we haven't made any money. All we've done is we've taken cash and we've turned it into other assets that we're going to need to succeed in our lemonade stand business. So let's make some assumptions about how the business is going to do over time. We're going to assume we're going to sell 800 cups of lemonade a year. We're going to assume that each cup we can sell for a dollar uh, and it's going to cost us about $530 per year to staff our lemonade stand. So now let's take a look at the income statement. So the income statement talks about the profitability, about the revenues that the business generated, what the expenses are, and what's left over uh, for the owner of the company. So we've got one lemonade stand. We're selling 800 cups of lemonade in our stand, we're charging a dollar. So we're generating about $800 a year in revenue. And we're spending $200 on inventory. There's a line item here called COGS. That stands for cost of goods sold. We have depreciation because our lemonade stand gets a bit beat up over time and it wears out over five years, so it depreciates over five years. We've got our labor expense to, uh, for people to actually pour the lemonade and collect cash from customers. And we have a profit, we have an EBIT, and that's earnings before interest and taxes of $10. It's kind of our pre-tax profit 
for the business. And we didn't make very much money because you take that pre-tax profit of $10 and you compare it to our revenues, it's about a 1.3% margin. That's not a particularly high profit. Now we've got to pay interest on our debts and we have a loss of $15 and then we don't have any taxes, but at the end of the day, we still lose money. Should we continue to invest in the business? We've lost money in the first year. Is it time to give up? Well, let's think about it. Let's make some projections about what the company's gonna look like over the next several years. Uh, let's assume that we take all the cash the business generates and we're gonna use it to buy more lemonade stands so we can grow. Let's assume we're not gonna take any money out of the company. Let's, we're not gonna pay a dividend. We're gonna keep all the money in the company and reinvest it. As we build our brand, we can charge a little more each year. So we're gonna raise our prices about a nickel uh, five cents more for each cup of lemonade each year. And then we're going to assume we can sell 5% more cups per stand per year. So we've got a built-in growth assumptions. So now let's take a look at the company. So you take a look at this chart. You'll see in year one, we started out with one lemonade stand. We add one a year, and then we, by year five, we're up to seven because we've got a big expansion plan. Our price per cup goes up a nickel a year, and our revenue goes from $800 and starts to grow fairly quickly. And the growth comes from increased prices for uh, cups of lemonade, and it also comes from opening more stands. So by year five, we have almost $8,000 in revenue. Uh, our costs are relatively constant, which is the lemonade and the sugar. Uh, that's about $1,702. We have depreciation as the more and more stands start to wear out over time. We've got labor expense. Um, but by year five, the business is actually doing pretty well. We went from a 1.3% margin to a, over a 28% margin. So the business is now up to scale. We're starting to cover some of our costs. We're growing. Uh, we're still paying $20 to $5 a year in interest for our loan. And we have a earnings before taxes after interest of $2,300 by the end of year five. So we put $500 into the business. We borrowed $250. And by year five, we're making a profit of $2,300. That sounds pretty good. Now we have to pay taxes to the government. That's about 35%. And we generate what we, net income, or another word for profits, of $1,500 by the fifth year, and about a dollar a share. So if you think about this, uh, our friend put up $500 to buy uh, 500 shares of stock. He paid a dollar. And after five years, if our business goes as we expect, he's actually making a dollar a share in profit. That sounds like a pretty good deal. Let's look at the cash flow statement. So as the business becomes more and more profitable, we generate more and more cash. And the cash builds up in the company. We go from $500 of cash in the company to over $2,000 of cash over the period. The balance sheet, uh, you know, again, the starting balance sheet had uh, shareholders equity of $1,490, but as the business becomes more profitable, uh, the profits add to the cash, they add to the assets of the company, our liabilities have not changed, and the business continues to build value over time. So again, by the end of year five, we've got $4,000 of shareholder equity, and that's almost three times what it was when we started. Now, is this a good business or a bad business? How do we think about whether it's good or bad? One thing to think about is what kind of earnings are we achieving compared to how much money went into the company? Now, this is a business that we valued at $1,500 when we started. Someone put up $500 for a third of the company. We give it a $1,500 value. But the end of year five, it's earning over $1,500 in earnings. Uh, so that's over 100% return on the money that we put into the company. That's actually quite a high number. We spent $2,100 in capital building lemonade stands. And we earned $2,336 in year five on the capital we invested. That's over 100% return on capital. That's a very attractive return. Earnings have grown at a very rapid rate, 155% uh, per annum. This is really a, a growth company. And our profitability has gone from 1.3% to 28.6% by year five. And that sounds uh, pretty attractive, and it is. So let's look at the person who put up the loan. Well, that person put up $250 and the business has been profitable. We've been able to pay them their interest of 10% a year, $25 a year, and they're happy because they put up $250, they're getting a 10% return on their loan, and the business is worth well more than $250. We've got more than that in cash. As a result, they're in a safe position, uh, but they've only made 10% on their money. 
Now let's compare that with the equity investor, the person who bought the stock in the company. That person earned a dollar a share in year five versus an investment of a dollar a share. So he's earning over 100% or about 100% return on his investment versus only 10% for the lender. So who, who got the better deal? Well, obviously the equity investor. Now why do the equity investor, why do they have the right to earn so much more than the lender? The answer is they took more risk. If the business failed, the lender is entitled to the first $250 of value that comes from liquidating the company. So the, if you sell off the lemonade stands and you only get $250, the lender gets back all their money, they're safe, they got their 10% return while the business was going, they got back their $250, but the equity investor, the person who bought the stock, is wiped out because they come after uh, the lender. <laughs>